Apple recently refreshed the iPad Pro line with the M1 chip, an improved FaceTime camera, and a new mini LED liquid crystal XDR display for the 12 inch model. If you're planning on upgrading, but you're not sure which model to choose, this video is for you. Starting with the build, the two tablets are extremely similar. Both feature an aluminum build construction with relatively slim bezels around the display and support for Thunderbolt 3 for faster data transfer speeds and the ability to power an external 4K monitor. The most noteworthy difference though between the two models is the fact that the 12.9 inch model is five millimeters thicker than the 11 inch model. And this might not seem like a very big difference, but it actually makes compatibility with various stands and accessories uh, slightly more of an issue. In fact, it was something I ran into while reviewing the Kensington Studio dock. I was barely able to squeeze the iPad into the USB-C port. Now, Kensington explicitly states that it is not compatible with this iPad Pro, but it's just something to keep in mind if you plan on picking up a dock like this, especially one that's been on the market for a while and not made specifically for the new iPads. You might run into some issues. But the slightly thicker build of the 12.9 inch model doesn't make using it any more difficult. It's just the overall size of the display that makes it more uh, wielding, in my opinion. If you have an iPhone 12 and a 15 inch MacBook Pro like I do, I actually found that the 11 inch iPad Pro, it complements those devices better because it sits between the two devices in terms of display size. Whereas the 12.9 inch model, because it's so similar in size to my laptop, it just makes me want to use my laptop for most applications because I have a keyboard, I have a, a rigid uh, hinge that I can prop the display up and down for watching content. I just feel like it doesn't fill a, a missing void as much as the 11 inch model does. The 12.9 inch model is gonna offer the superior content consuming experience. It has the new mini LED liquid crystal XDR display, which is a new technology that's actually so new it's causing supply issues and various delays. But essentially what it offers is improved colors, significantly improved brightness and contrast ratios compared to the 11 inch model and its display. And you're gonna get the best experience when watching content that's, that explicitly supports high dynamic range and Dolby Vision. And I will say it is a beautiful display that once again makes watching Netflix, HBO, and even YouTube videos a treat. I will say though, that while the 11 inch model has the same exact display as the 2020 iPad Pro, it's still an excellent panel. I mean, you're not gonna notice much of a difference at all when scrolling through apps, browsing the web, or playing games. Both panels have an ultra smooth 120 Hertz refresh rate, which is smoother than the newest iPhones. They have wide color gamuts. They have the true tone technology to adjust the color temperature based on the lighting conditions around you. And there's anti-reflective coatings. As a fan of OLED displays, I've got an OLED panel in my iPhone. I've got an OLED LG TV in my living room. I'm just not entirely convinced that the mini LED display of the iPad Pro 12.9 inch is worth the inflated price. I might actually hold out for an iPad Pro with an OLED display. Now, what's neat is both models support the new M1 Apple silicone chip and are insanely quick and responsive. This chip is paired with eight gigabytes of RAM or 16 gigabytes of RAM on the models with one terabyte or two terabytes of storage. And that's just absolutely nutters. <laughs> it's gonna future-proof yourself for many, many years. Apple is actually rumored to be working on updating its pro apps for iPad OS, including Logic and Final Cut. So these iPads, because they're running Apple Silicon, should be able to run them beautifully whenever they are released. And it just goes without saying that basically anything you do on these iPads, well, they're gonna be able to run and perform the tasks very efficiently without really breaking a sweat. One of the other big improvements this year is with the 12 megapixel ultra wide true depth camera or selfie camera. You'll be able to add and play around with all sorts of portrait lighting effects, and it even includes support for Apple's new center stage feature that will zoom in and focus on you while you move around your environment while on a video call. And that's pretty neat um, because it works with third-party services like Zoom, Cisco WebEx, and others, not just FaceTime. So it's a feature that actually is going to be widely implemented. And it's just perfect for the new Zoom world we live in nowadays. You can also pick up one of these iPads with uh, support for 5G, which is pretty cool. But other than that, they're gonna have a, a similar 10 hour battery life as the predecessors. They're gonna have Face ID support and an amazing quad speaker array. What it really boils down to is if you want a bigger, even more beautiful display 
and you're willing to pay for it. The 11 inch model, it starts at $799, while the 12.9 inch model, it starts at $1,099, about $1,100, which is $100 more than last year's 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So as someone who really likes to save money as much as they possibly can and stretch their dollar, I think the 11 inch model actually makes more sense. You also have to factor in the cost of accessories. I mean, if you plan on picking up a Magic Keyboard and maybe an Apple Pencil, you're pushing $1,500, give or take, which is more than a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air. So hopefully this video helps you make a decision between the two. Feel free to voice your thoughts in the comments down below. As always, guys, I'm BoHD from Slash.TV. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you right back here in the next one. See ya.